Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about teaching you how to create print on demand designs that sell. Be sure to stay tuned until the end of the video because I have another five bonus niches for you guys. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can create um, this style of design. This is my listing. I'm on Amazon right now. So you can see my brand therapy designs. Um, and so I'm going to show you guys how you can do this cool uh, sort of. It's like a paint, uh, paint stroke kind of design. I've seen a lot of these, especially on Etsy, where you just get those kind of narrow paint strokes that kind of look cool. This one's obviously Easter themed, but you can do this for pretty much anything. So I'm going to go ahead, jump over to Canva, and we'll, we'll go over how we can create this type of design. So on Canva, I'm going to go ahead, go to custom size. We're going to select 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. That is the standard size for t-shirt designs, and it will ensure that when you print it, it does come out above 300 DPI. Now, I usually like to design my, color, my designs for the darker colors, as those do tend to sell best. However, on Easter, sometimes the lighter colors, the more pastels will do better. So it just kind of depends on what I'm designing for. I'll go ahead right now, just leave the background color white. Why not? Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to start with kind of getting that paint stroke style that we want. So right now I have my rulers and guides pulled up. If you don't have those, you can hit shift R on the keyboard that will pull up your rulers and guides, or you can go ahead and go over to file at the top, um, go down to settings and then show rulers and guides is going to be right there. Either way, once we have our rulers and guides up, I am going to divide the page essentially into four equal parts. So, so something like that, I've got my, my four little parts. And so that's where I'm going to be putting those brush strokes. So from here, what we'll do is we'll go over to elements and what we can do is we can put like paint stroke is what I searched for, but anything you want paint stroke and we can go to graphics. We can go to photos. Honestly, it doesn't matter which one you choose. Let's see. There's some good photo ones here too. And we're looking for something that's you know, any of these would kind of work. That's a little bit wider and more narrow. Um, and so you can see lots of different ones here. Uh, any of those would work. If I go to graphics, graphics, some of them have sort of a little bit of a cooler edge to them and you can just sort of start playing. So let's say I take this blue one here and I'm going to make it vertical and I'm going to make it nice and big. So what I'm looking for is for it to pretty much fill the entire area there. And so that would be a good example of one and we can look at others. What we want though is for them to end up being about the same thickness and about the same height. So for example, here is another one I could do. Oops. But this one, I think it's going to be a little bit more narrow. So it's not quite as wide as that one if I make them about the same height. So it might not be the best one. By the way, once we have an idea of the height that we want, I can again put little guidelines here so that I know I want to fill that general area. And so we can just sort of keep looking from here. And there's nothing to stop us, by the way, from overlapping several. So what we're doing here is just sort of creating a frame. So if it's not quite you know, filling it up enough, I can just totally take another one, put it right over the top and use that to sort of fill up the rest of it. So I could easily say, I want to do something like this, or I could, uh, let's flip it like that, pull it down, scooch it over so that it's taken up again, a good most of it there. And I can overlap like that and that would work really well. That's not going to be a problem. I can pull it up so that it's high up on the top, make it come down again. You want them to be about the same height there. And so nothing to stop me from just starting to overlap like that would work really well. Here's another one. Again, I'm looking for basically getting shapes getting shapes and filling the page is pretty much all I'm going for here. So that works okay. I would like to kind of fill in some of the edges. So anything I can do that will help fill those edges in for me, it would be great. So, oops, maybe I take this and I do 
something there so that I can get a little bit closer to the edge there. That works. Maybe I take it actually and flip it that way so I don't get quite the hard edge at the top there. That'll work. One more. Let's see. Let's see if I can fill the page one more. Okay, so here I've got some basic shapes. Now I know there are obviously lots of different colors in here. Don't worry about the colors. Pretty much the whole point of the shapes is that we're creating a frame. So that is it. We are just creating paint stroke frames. And so the shape that we have in each of these is going to be the shape that we can put our image on. So assuming that they're, you know, around the same height, around the same width, you know, give or take, that they're around the same spacing in between. We want them to be nice and close together. So if I need to scoot anything over to just make it look like it's nice and close together, I can do it that way. And I can always use the arrow keys on my keyboard again to make sure that they're really nice and close together, but ideally not overlapping because I do want to put pictures in there that aren't overlapping. So, so far this looks pretty good. And I can start by the way, by just go ahead and calling this a uh, paint stroke frame. And we're going to download that. Hit download. It's a PNG. We do want a transparent background for our frames. And then we can just go ahead and hit download. And that is going to be the frame that we're going to use. Now what we want to do is put pictures over the frames. So what kind of pictures are we going to use? For, for this design, we're doing Easter design. So we'll go ahead and do Easter pictures. Now you can use any Easter pictures you want. I'm going to go ahead and show you using some of the Canva AI features because those are kind of cool for this kind of design. So I can go over again to elements. Let's get rid of this. And if I scroll down to AI image generator, I can just go ahead and hit generate my own. Now what we want is definitely something in the portrait style. And then we can go ahead and pick. So let's say we're doing different kind of Easter themes in each of these. So let's say the first one I want bunny and I can put just bunny, I can put spring bunny, Easter bunny, cute Easter bunny. Um, so, I mean, we might try a few different things. Uh, spring bunny, how about cute spring bunny? Cute spring bunny and go ahead and generate image and it'll come up with four different images. If they're great, perfect, we'll use one of them. If not, we can try again and we can play with the words. We can play with Easter bunny or we can just have it generate again and it'll keep generating until we come up with ones that work. So, oh my God, some of these are adorable. This one and this one especially, I really like either one of these. So let's say I clicked on this, you can add it to the design and you could see how if I was to go ahead and do that, I'm gonna have to crop it way down here, but I could stick him here yeah, and it's gonna be something like that is how it would work. And so that is a really cute bunny. We could use that one too. So either way, I love the way that that looks. That's adorable. I might even flip it horizontal so the bunny is looking inward. I think that that's going to be a little bit better there. If you wanna see how it's gonna line up, we can use some transparency to see through the bunny. That way we can see where the bunny is going to hit on the paint strokes. So actually first one, great. Okay, let's try this again. So let's go back and we're gonna generate again, make sure you're on portrait. And the next one I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and do cute chick. How about cute Easter chick? And go ahead and hit generate image and we'll try again. Okay, very cute. And again, there's some cute ones here at that bottom that I like with the, um, with the little Easter chick. I do want it to look the same style as this. So even though this one might be cute or this one might be cute, I do want it to, to kind of match the style. So either one of these is going to look good and you might, you know, just try them both out to see. Oops, move that out of the way. So let's say I center my, my chick here. Gotta make sure he's gonna cover the whole thing. Kind of center the face, crop it in. Again, you're going to crop it right to the edge there. And there's a cute Easter face there. He's kind of cute. That might be a little big. We can try the other one too. And of course, we could always try generating again too. So nothing to stop you from generating it more than once. Let's go here. 
Again, that looks really cute, sort of a crop. We know where the lines are. So that one is again, adorable. Either one of those is gonna be really flipping cute. Let's go ahead and try again. Let's go back again, portrait. And maybe this time let's go with some like spring flowers. So let's go with like, I can put Easter tulips or something like that, or spring tulips, generate image. When I put Easter, I start to get some of the Easter eggs in there, which is cute too. If I just put spring, I can just get tulips, but if I put Easter, I can get usually tulips that also have some Easter eggs. I could have also done some Easter eggs with the Easter bunny, so lots of different fun ways we can do that. Totally cute. Okay, here we go. And again, you can go with any ones that you want. So let's say I did this. This one actually does not have any Easter eggs in it, but that's okay. We're going spring. And so I could do something like that. And then let's go ahead and do one more. Actually didn't need to go back. I can just type here and let's go with Easter basket. And generate a uh, image here. Okay, super cute ones. So I kind of like the one at the bottom the best in terms of going with these. Um, not that these aren't all good images. I think the colors on this one are going to match sort of the best. But again, I could always hit to try again and see if I could get maybe that Easter basket that's maybe outside a little bit instead of inside, I think. So that's cute. Maybe let's try again. Let's generate again and see if we can come up with something better than that one. I like the idea of maybe an Easter basket outside. I can always specify. Okay, so it came up with some more Easter baskets. Here's one that has the Easter basket outside. You're kind of looking down on it a little bit, but maybe that's a little bit closer. So let's see what this one might look like if we were to crop it in. So it might look something like that. And that looks pretty cute. So I like that. Let's say we're gonna do these, these will be fine. So those are the four pictures that I got. I'm just gonna go ahead and change the top of this too to pick, call it Easter mask. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit share, download. For this one, it doesn't need to be a transparent background. We can just do it as is, hit download. Cool. And then from here, we're just gonna go ahead and jump over to photo P. So if you haven't seen my videos before, PhotoP is super fun and easy to use. It's also totally free and you don't have to sign up or anything. Just hit uh, photop.com, put it in your browser. You should get a page look something like this. And we can go ahead and hit open from computer. It will pull up your downloads from there. We're gonna start with the frame. So your paint stroke frame that you made earlier, go ahead and hit open. And give it a second, it's gonna pull up your paint stroke frame. So here is your frame. And then from here, we're gonna go up to the top where it says file, about three spaces down, it'll say open in place. That will pull up your downloads. Now you're gonna go ahead and pick your Easter mask and hit open. And so what it should do is put your Easter mask right on top. So what you should be seeing here is just your Easter mask. If you go over to the right, you should see two layers. Easter mask is on top and then your background layer, that's going to be your frame is on the bottom and your Easter mask should be the one that's highlighted. So assuming all of this is true, you'll go up to the top where it says layer and about halfway down, it'll say clipping mask. You can click that and boom, it is going to put your pictures right inside those paint strokes. So just like that, super easy. And then we can go up to file and we can export it. Export as a PNG. We'll give it a second. It'll pull up a box for us. Okay, so now it's pulled up a box here. We can rename it here. So we can go ahead and put uh, Easter, paint strokes and hit save. And that is all that we needed photo P4. It really should have been that fast, that easy and that free. And we can jump right back over to Canva. And so super easy for that, for the clipping mask. And then all we have to do here is let's go ahead and add another page and we'll go over to uploads on the side hit upload and go ahead. And from our downloads, we're just gonna select Easter paint stroke. And here it is uploading what we just made. So I can just go ahead and click on that. I can close this and here is our Easter paint strokes. So just like that, super easy. 
And at this point, I can get rid of those lines. So if those lines are bugging you, we can just sort of pull them out of the way so they're no longer in the frame. Get rid of that. And here we've got our little paint strokes. And we can make those as big or as small as we want across the page. And now what we can do is go ahead and put something in like Happy Easter or whatever it is you want to write. Um, so just pull up a text box, hit T on your keyboard. I'm going to go ahead and just write, oops, Happy Easter. And we'll bring that up top here. Now we can pick whatever font we want for this. I think on my example, I just did one that was sort of a little bit more scripty. Let's see, we went with uh, brush, brush script. Yeah, lots of brush things, regular brush. I went with brush script, but it just sort of gave it that look there. Very cute. I can center that. And then we can pick whatever color we want. Ideally something that's gonna match off of here. Now, depending on what color shirt we wanna put this on, we can sort of go from there. So if I'm going for a light shirt, obviously I'm going to want a color that's gonna match. It's pulling up some colors here. So any of these might look kind of cute. I like that pink right there, it looks kind of nice. And so there you go, Happy Easter. And that looks pretty flippin' cool. I can go ahead and title this Happy Easter. And then from here, we'll go over to the corner where it says share, we'll download, it's a PNG. Make sure you hit transparent background. Go ahead, select your current page, which on this one is going to be page two. We'll hit done and we'll hit download. And then from here, it's ready to go up on whatever you want. So if you wanna go ahead and put this up on a t-shirt, you can do that. It's actually a little bit more square design, so it would look good on maybe even a pillow or a tote bag. It could look good on, so you can put it up on as many things as you like. Um, and it's ready to go. And of course, you can use this style now, not only to do Easter, but to do just about anything you want. So there would be nothing stopping you, especially now that you have your frames ready from reusing those frames and just keep putting different images in and just keep going with different themes. And so you can do this as often, or not as often, but you can scale it out as much as you want. So if you have questions about this, by the way, drop it in the comment section below. I try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can. Thank you again for all the kind words. It does mean a lot. I am trying to grow this channel and I'm working hard on trying to create a full print on demand course for you guys. And because you were so patient and waited until the end of the video, I do have another five bonus niches for you. All right, so as promised, these are gonna be your five bonus niches. And these are, again, a little bit random. They are niches that are selling right now on Amazon. So without any more waiting. So number one, official sleep shirt. So basic pajama shirt. Number two, the best beer is an open one. Number three, I would prefer not to. Number four, wine tasting is my favorite sport. And number five, Cruise Squad 2025. Um, and so you can create some really cool designs off of that. Again, I hope everybody is doing well and I do hope to see you guys again. That's it for today's video. If you found that useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.